streaming. So uh, this is going to be episode eight of the P Dubs Arcade Loft podcast, and of course we have a special uh, guest with us today. We got Detroit Love in the house, and Detroit Love YouTube. It's your boy Detroit Love with another video. And I did not put him up for the Spider-Man costume. He totally shocked me when he joined the show and he was wearing the costume. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I'll, I'll cue the music and we'll get going. What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Detroit Love and Pete Dub with a live video. <laughs> got it. Hey, good morning, everybody. Today is Sunday, February 23rd, 2020, and this is your good old host, P-Dubs. Welcome to the Loftport, your arcade and gaming news podcast. And on today's episode, we have special guest, Detroit Love, in the house. How's it going there, Spider-Man? Are you trying to get that mask off? <laughs> yeah, I am trying to get this mask off. <laughs> but we, I can talk while I'm doing it, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. it, Devil Waldo says, it's your boy. All right. Hey, Spider-Man, don't, don't Batman, give me my identity. Hello, gamers. Thanks, Sean. All right, guys. So we got some stuff to talk about today. So on today's podcast episode, we're going to do, it's going to be split in half ski, if you will. We're going to be talking about Detroit Love's amazing Toy Shock pinball mod that he's been working on for weeks that it's done now, right, buddy? It's completely oh, done. Yeah. yeah. And, and after that, we're going to talk about the uh, Arcade 1-Up pre-orders that are available and what we think about those machines coming out and whether or not uh, we're going to be placing our own pre-orders as well. Uh, so hopefully we can keep this episode around uh, less than an hour. And let's have some fun. There he is. He's got the mask off. How's it going, buddy? Oh, man, everything's wonderful. It was hot. <laughs> yeah. So I am in Arizona. It is 77 degrees here. You are in Michigan. Where? What is the weather there today, buddy? Uh, it's 40 Maybe forty-five if we're lucky. That ain't bad. I'm from Chicago. In forty, when it was forty-five in Chicago, we would be walking around without any jackets. On. Oh yeah, the forty-five. That's like summer here for now. Ready yeah. for some shorts. <laughs> we have the sun, so that's always helpful. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to. Oh, let me hit that wrong button. I'm going to try and share my screen, and I'm going to pull up your YouTube video. Uh, so bear with me and. That way we can kind of have that plane in the background. And if you want to start talking about your Toy Shock mod from like start to finish, you got this machine, you did a diagnosis on it, which I love that diagnosis video you did, where you were you were like pacing the machine, like, what am I going to do to this thing? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the video before that was um, I actually took my uh, RK 1UP boxes uh -huh. and, and did a mock-up of the toy shop based on the dimensions that they had right so i think if you just type in toy shock if you hit the search there to the right of about uh see there yeah no to, to the right of it yep yeah. all right and put in toy shock that should give you the list but i initially i initially did the mock-up so if you scroll down right there first oh, yeah. Mock -up, yeah so Full i did size. that one initially um just to see you know is this is this size adequate for what what I'm wanting to do? You know, is it was it going to be too small? Was it going to be the right height? Because I'm, I think five. I say five seven, but I'm probably a little bit shorter than five seven. Five right, five, six and a half. And uh, and and with the mock up, I'm like, okay, this is something that I I would be willing to do. So if you scroll through there, you can see. Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so I did the mock up, and I'm like, okay, this is perfect size for alongside with the RK one up boxes uh you know cabinets so so that was my intro into it and then and then you got your cabinet and yes. start, I, I put in my order but you you know obviously got yours for, for free and got that up front uh, so you know and then I did the should I mod it 
you know, uh, but obviously I hadn't had any time with it to actually to play with it because I, I have behind me, I have three cabinets mm -hmm. modded. The, the uh, golden tea is not modded. Um, and so if the pinball was perfect for me, I wouldn't have modded the toy shock. And I thought the toy shock was a really fun cabinet. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I love playing it. It wasn't, it wasn't games that I was familiar with. And to be honest, I'm not familiar with a whole lot of pinball because I didn't really pay. I didn't really play pinball growing up. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I grew up with, with Pac-Man and Space Invaders and Galaga and Galaxian and all that stuff. And, and so from my standpoint, I had very limited funds growing up. So if I had a handful of uh, quarters, one, I was lucky. And two, I was going to play something that, that I could play for a, a, an extended amount of time. If I put a quarter in a pinball, that ball could jump down the center and I would be out of the quarter within, you know, seconds. Right. Uh, where I could play Donkey Kong or Gallagher or Pac-Man for, you know, an hour or more, you know, so... Um, so that was that was the reasoning why I never really played a lot of pinball, uh, but I always liked pinball. When I would go into the arcades, I would, you know, occasionally put a, a quarter into it and, and mess around with it. So I was excited about the the concept of digital pinball and being able to play it again. Uh, and so the Toy Shock, man, I I really enjoyed that. I think I had it for maybe a full month playing it, and I played it quite a bit. And and I didn't have any of the lag that people were talking about. Uh, if I did, it wasn't anything that I, that, that registered uh, to me, and I, I just enjoyed the heck out of. It. I, I really like the uh, what's the camera action lights, camera action, lights, camera action, um, TX sector. You know, it was a few of them. The only one I didn't like was that uh, what's it called, crazy something zany. Going nuts. I Going hate nuts. That. Yeah. I hate that game. I hate it. Yeah, that, that is nuts for sure. That's the right name for that because it's definitely going nuts. Yeah. If anyone in, if anyone on the uh, live stream here, if you have a toy shock machine, go ahead and uh, throw your comments in. Don't be afraid to live chat with us, as well as uh, let us know what your favorite or uh, least favorite game is on that machine. There is no doubt that the machine did have some performance issues. Uh, toy shock has acknowledged it as well as Farsight Studios. Looks like the game was only running at 30 frames per second when it should have been running closer to 60. Uh, and depending on the game, that 30 frames per second, the um, it's your boy. <laughs> Can you see the comments that they're putting in the in the chat? Oh, yes. Yeah, jumping up. All right. All right. Beautiful. beautiful. Um, so hey, and depending on the game, the uh, game delay and the flipper lag delay, it would vary by game. Some games it was very noticeable, some games less so. <laughs> Um, I myself would adapt to it very quickly and I still have the original, you know, stuff in the machine. I haven't modded my cabinet except for some, uh, appearance stuff. Um, so, you know, but then there's some people, especially those who they're V pin enthusiasts or real mechanical pinball enthusiasts, that delay just doesn't work for them. You know, they would play it for two minutes and say, I'm out, I quit. I, I'm done. <laughs> uh, but Toy Shock has announced uh, on their fan page and stuff that, you know, uh, well, technically I kind of made the announcement for them that those issues have been resolved. They fixed the, it was a software issue. It was not a hardware issue. And Farsight Studios has uh, on the um, next wave of machines, whenever they become available, you know, thanks to China and the coronavirus, there's delays, um, you know, but once those next wave of machines come out, you can order with confidence. The game will be running the way it should. Um, and I think that'll get people kind of excited about that product again. Um, Centigrade 37 for the win. That's a good game. Did you like Centigrade Detroit? Yeah. yeah I, I don't think, I don't think I dislike any of them other than that nutty one. Uh, I think all of them were fun. Uh, you know, I, I remember as a kid, I had a, a Sears pinball machine. Because back then it was just basically just bells, right? Bells, and I mean it's very simple mechanics uh, for the pinball. So I did have a, a little toy uh, pinball machine that I really enjoyed playing from Sears. Uh, mm -hmm. So that so that was the only connection to that those type of older style pinball machines. Um, so obviously I I I I wanted to to get the newer advanced uh, games with the DMDs and things like that. So that's that's right. why I decided to to um uh, upgrade so right there the super mod with the green second this, 
yeah, yeah. let's get, let's get this one going. Yeah. And so and so so I knew that I would I would be modding it, uh, but you know I didn't know anything about digital pinball. I had not played with it. See with RK One Up, you know, with the uh, Retro Pi and all that stuff, I had I had played with that. I used to, I had a Pi on my computer uh, on my TV, and I had retro games on there playing with you know controllers. So that I had some uh, some knowledge with. Uh, putting it into a cabinet was just you know a, a simple thing to do. So going over to the digital pinball, I had nothing to relate to it, and and it was pretty. It's, it's a pretty complicated process to go through. Um, and so so I knew I would uh, have to get involved with the software first. So I I had a deconstructed a deconstructed PC, and I right. started playing around with that with a, a separate monitor that I could rotate. And I started playing with the software. And so that's that's the biggest hurdle you have to get over is just dealing with learning that software. Uh, but I love the tables, man. They they play very well. Um but it, but as but as as in regards to the uh, theme of the thing, like I said, I didn't have a whole lot of uh experience or any memories that I can that can help me to, to decide which theme I would put on the, the table. Right. Right. Uh, and so I I, I I went back to my childhood and it's like Spider-Man was always my boy. You know, Spider-Man was, you know, I think I could relate to him. I always, I've always been a techie. I've always <laughs> been a techie. Uh, right. and, and so that brainiac type of thing, the, the uh, facade of Spider-Man being a young kid. I, w I was into computers in high school, worked in a computer lab and all that stuff. So I've always been a computer since high school. Right. Right. Uh, I can relate to Spider-Man from that standpoint, trying to get the girl right, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, and so, so Spider-Man, that was, that was, I was like, yeah, I got to do a Spider-Man table. And I, I found this table here and this table is tons of fun. Oh yeah. It's great. It's yeah, great. And that is fun. I mean, so, you know, with pinball, I, like I said, I didn't have a lot of experience. So getting with the tables and understanding the logic and what the, the goals are, I think Spider-Man communicates it clearly that you can get those ramps pretty good because some of these tables you could keep hitting bumpers and you know hitting things that don't give you scores and, and right you go down the center it's just they're just not fun tables and, and some of those tables are you know popular tables but in my view they're not fun because you can never really you know easily get control of that ball you know but this right. table was a no-brainer from that standpoint so um so this so this so i never scanned anything none of my rk one-ups had a, a, a special scan to it you know, so uh, that was something new. Getting putting the decals on it, and and I'm sure I could have done that better. I definitely had some some issues on the um, on the top, but I think that top came out beautiful, man. With the oh, with yeah. the uh, spot with the comics. I mean, it looks black when you're away from it, and and even when you're not paying attention to it, it looks black. But it's but it but the comic strips that you can actually read them, and there it's like a dark gray. Yeah. Um, where did you uh, Where did you get the graphics from? Did you get them from one of the vendors? Yep, one of the in our groups, uh, Oscar Martin. Oscar Martin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he worked with me. I, I had a different, a slightly different scheme that I that I presented to him. And he said, "Hey, how, what do you think about this?" And I and I love this idea. Uh, I don't know if you can really see, but I have like at the top of the, the plate glass is a sort of like a a, a spin on the comic books. Is, it says Detroit Love Edition. It's the Marvel. It Detroit does. Edition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I think, well, you, I think if you, uh, I, don't, I don't know where it is in the video, but but yeah, we'll let it keep going. I, I like having that going in the uh, the background there. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. So so, what size? We've got some questions from some folks in the chat here. They want to know the size of the screen. So did you upgrade from a twenty four inch to? Did you say? I have, not, I have not changed. That's the, that's the stock. Um, Stock monitor. Um, I had I had considered uh, upgrading to a thirty mm -hmm. uh, because a thirty would fit in there, but you got to find the right uh, the right TV or monitor uh, because there's not a whole lot of room inside. For for, <laughs> for some reason, for some reason, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there, man? <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, it's not a lot. Look, all that stuff in there is is not a whole lot of room inside. Yeah, that is crazy. How much you got jammed in there? So yeah. you actually found the LCD uh, converter board that's compatible with the Toy Shock pinball machine. So if someone wanted to reuse the Toy Shock monitor, that Panda monitor that comes with it, 
you found the right board, correct? Yeah, correct. And yeah. and I actually, you know, I, I I will talk about it later, but I'm actually going to be giving out one of those uh, uh, converter boards to one of the people in the group uh, when we talk about the contest side. Uh, but yeah, but this I, I work with the same vendor that supplied the ones for RK One Up, and they uh -huh. they okay this pretty quickly for me. Um, but when you talk, when you start talking about the TV, mm -hmm. you know, it's you know everything has a height, right? Your your video card, your 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 um, power supply, all that stuff has a certain height, so right. it limits. Because for some reason, Toy Shock, you know, the if you look at the outside of the cabinet, it goes way down, but the inside is much shorter than that. You know, right. they didn't put the floor at the base of that; they mm -hmm. put it like midway or probably yeah. just above midway. So that really reduces the, the the room that you have inside. So I could get a 30 a 30 inch monitor, which is not a very common size. You know, you typically have 32, you have 27, you might get a 28. Um, but um, you would have to take that board off at the back where the cords are coming out. Right. You get a 32 in there. And so that means you would have to float your uh, back glass off of the original mounting point to get a 32 in there. So if you did want to do that, a 30 would be the max size that you, you would do. And you have to get the right uh, 30 inch that has the correct thickness because, again, you can only go so deep once you have stuff inside of there. So I, I, I didn't want to deal with that at the start. It's, it may be something I do down the line. But to be honest with you, the 24 inches, I don't have a problem with it. I, I don't have a problem with it. it it once you're once you're playing the game, even that bezel when it was silver, you know, your eyes is focused on the play field and, and the, the bezel is irrelevant at the time. But but just from a, a static side that the silver, which is, we all can agree, the silver was just too much. Um, but I love having that that bezel along the sides. Um, the 24 inches. Perfect. I, I don't I, I, I mean, obviously, you anytime we deal with TVs as men or the bigger, the better. Right. You know, right. Um, if you have space for it, you want to utilize it. But in all honesty, the the twenty eight is is I mean, I'm sorry, the twenty four inch is is fine for the, for the experience of playing it. If you can upgrade and find the right monitor, go for it. But it's not it's not necessary. Yeah. Now, real quick, when you had shared that converter board, um, I ordered one and I couldn't get it to work. And I remember you and I were messaging each other back and forth. And I don't know if I just had it wired in wrong. Did you have any problems with any of the boards? Did uh... yeah, it, I, I think we had it wired. I, I think we had it wired in wrong. Yeah, uh, there's a particular way that you have to to, to wire it. Um, and I and I and I guess I'm gonna have to do a video just to, to yeah. clarify that for people. Yeah, it's just a particular way. And and a lot of people, uh, I know Nicole in the groups and few people have gotten the board and 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 utilized it no problem. Uh, so it was just uh it was just you know we were the first to do it right. You know so. We had to figure things out, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. That Nicole girl, she's done an amazing job that we've seen in the Facebook groups on the uh, the modding for uh, her her toy shock uh, pinball machine. Yeah, Nicole Brennigan. Uh, yeah, and she, was, and she was instrumental in getting the plunger to work because that was that was the uh, key thing for me that I wanted to uh, I wanted the plunger to work, and, and right. Nicole uh, found the, the item that allows that to happen. I think if you scroll down in the in the in that video there it's got the links to that um whatever that device is oh yeah yeah i'll put links uh to this video in the video description below that way you guys can hop over to detroit loves page check out this video as well as make sure you get, hit that subscribe button and uh and that way uh, you can uh, support all the efforts he's done here for the arcade gaming community. It looks fantastic. We do have a couple questions in the chat we wanted to throw at you. So first one from Will uh, is, is it hard to keep it cool uh, for heat exhaust? It looked like you did have some fans at the back of the cabinet near the power supply. That's where they yeah. should be, right? Yeah, that, that's that's definitely needed. Again, because that cabinet is so small, mm -hmm. all those component, components are right up on each other and then when you close the lid down that screen is right up against all of those things as well so when i initially put it together i didn't have uh, any any fan outside of what was already included on the on the um uh motherboard so mm -hmm. i think what i'm touching right now that's a fan that came with it and i think it was mounted in the in the original case but that by itself was not adequate 
Um, so I, I added th three fans. There's two in the back. One's blowing in and one's blowing out. Right. And then there's a fan uh, you saw earlier next to the uh, video controller board mm -hmm. up there on the uh, – on the screen, the built-in screen, the play field. So those three together keeps it cool enough. And so that, that worked out great. But yeah, prior to putting those in there, uh, I would have the game on and then I, the next day it would be shut down. And when I booted up, it says, hey, the we had a heating issue and had to shut down. So you definitely have to have um, provisions and, and you know fans for cooling right. off. Well, what I like about your mod is you were able to reuse the monitor because if you have to source another TV to put in there, that just drives up the cost. So for those who are watching who are thinking about modding a toy shock and turning it into a full-fledged virtual pinball machine like you have, how much uh, can you give us a ballpark as to how much you think you dumped into this machine, including the $400 cost of the machine? Right. So uh, let me see. I didn't have to buy the computer, but if you were able, to, if if you were to source a, that same exact computer, that would be about two hundred bucks. Um, so I would say my cost was probably around just under a grand. Wow! For all the things, and then so if you include that uh, the computer, it would be about twelve hundred bucks. Wow! No, no soldering, no, you know, you didn't have to do anything complicated the most the most complicated piece of it period outside of understanding the software uh was just cutting that that uh the original back glass to accommodate the the um, monitor the second monitor that that's right. the hardest thing of it and i and i'm I, i'm not good at the field. you know i used to have a screwdriver and a hammer in the house now <laughs> I, I have much more than that uh you know, so my my cut work, and and I realize now what my issue was with uh, cutting that out. I did I had the wrong blade on my right. on my uh, saw, and so it was had bigger blades. You need a finer wood uh, saw, you know, blade in order to cut that uh, wood. And so that that was the only issue. That was the hardest thing, just cutting that piece out. And, and yeah. obviously, you got the right tools and use it right. That's not an issue. Yeah. So we got a couple more questions. Uh, so for instance, uh, what CPU and GPU did you use? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I can pull up. Everything, everything is in the description of the video. Um, okay. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't, uh, you know. Yeah. One thing Detroit Love does great, guys, if you hop over to his channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button again, is in his videos, in his video descriptions, he does put excellent lists of hey this is everything i did and the links and all that kind of stuff so uh you'll probably find it on this video we'll see if he can pull it up quickly here and also uh someone asked was there any soldering involved with this particular mod none, none. no soldering guys <laughs> and give me a second here yeah. uh so the question was what's the cpu is i know it's a i5 i5 uh, I think it's like a three point something. I'm almost there. It, it's not. A, it's not a real. Uh, it's a very inexpensive computer. It's, a, it's probably a ten year old computer. Yeah, but it's powerful enough to run. What's the front end you're running on this one? I'm using the uh, Pinball X as the front end, and I'm I'm primarily running uh, Pinball Visual Pinball. Uh, mostly 10 tables. And I have a few nine tables, version nine. Uh, version nine, any computer can do. Version 10 may require a little extra oomph. But but the graphics card is the, is the most significant thing that you need. Uh, and I found it here. Okay. So the PC is a Dale Optiplex 9010. It's an i5 uh 3470, 3.2 gigahertz. I got 16 gig of RAM, uh, and that's it. I, I did have to upgrade the, uh, what do you call it, the power supply. Right. And that was, and that requirement was because of the graphics card that I chose to get. Uh, I got a uh, EVGA EForce GTX 1650 uh, XC Black Gaming 4 gigabyte. Uh, graphics card 
and so that particular graphics card needed a special plug that wasn't on my OEM uh, power supply. So that's only reason. So if you if you got a different um, graphics card, you wouldn't need probably wouldn't need to upgrade. Yeah, yeah. The, it's, but, but it wasn't difficult to do to switch out the power yeah. supply. It's fantastic. I think it looks great. I love the Spider Man artwork on the cabinet. I love that you made it Spider Man themed. I love the Spider Man character you got on top of the cabinet, and of course you in costume. Is just it's awesome. <laughs> I have fun. I have fun doing that video, and and, and you saw me on top of that uh, right. cabinet. I mean that that the thing is built like a tank. Yeah, it is. You know, yeah. I, I don't think the 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 other, you know, the game room solutions and the and I don't even think the RK one up one is going to be that uh, that solid. That 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 toy shock is is a solid cabinet. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely sturdy uh, sturdily built. And uh, that's one thing that I do like about it. Okay, so uh, high five to you on this one. This was a fantastic mod. We're about halfway through the show. We wanted to do, like I said, we're going to talk about your Toy Shock mod for half the show, and then we're going to switch gears and talk about Arcade One Up and the new machines that are now available for pre-order and what we think and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to switch gears here. Let me uh, get that stream off of there. And so... Um, for instance, let's talk about uh, the Frogger cabinet. So, okay. so Frogger, it, you get what? Frogger, and what are the other two games included on this one? Um, the, pilot, the pilot game, right? Yeah, I'm not familiar with that game. You yeah, know, I, I don't like when they 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 don't they sometimes don't put the best combination of games on these things. I mean. For the, for that price set, the Time Pilot and Time Pilot eighty four, I mean, it's a stretch for Frogger by itself in the cabinet, in my right. opinion. You know what I mean? Um, I, I I don't mind making it the signature graphics. If the graphics are nice, that that little beige blank spot on the side, I don't get that. I've I've never seen a, a Frogger cabinet with that spot. And make you know when we in the arcade, especially as kids, all those arcades are usually smashed up against each other. So right, you know, I don't think this is the original art anyway. Yeah, uh, I think the, I think the art on the side has been changed a little bit with the design of the frog. And yeah, you no, know, now is that beige area? Is that uh, from the original? Yeah, yeah. So the original uh, did have that um, that wood panel on the side, and then the graphic. The graphic up top it did look very similar to this okay um yeah so you got time pilot time pilot 84 and in all honesty um i've never played those games i, I can't even remember those games obviously i played frogger a hundred times they we got a quote here they shouldn't have mixed a four-way joystick game with two eight ways okay so yeah uh obviously frogger's four way so i'm assuming time pilots eight way again i've never played those games uh but just looking at the cabinet um in my personal opinion, out of the three cabinets that are available for pre-order, this is the one I personally am probably not going to order. Nothing against Arcade One Up. I'm just not a fan of this cabinet or these games. Uh, I have Frogger on a hundred other machines if I want to play it. Um, so I don't think, and of course, I'm running out of space. <laughs> so I need to be a little bit more selective, according to the wife. I would agree. This, this would be the least. This would be the least favorite for me. Uh, in order for this, this this has to resonate with you, right? This guy's like, oh, I man, I used to love playing Fro Frogger. And I did love playing Frogger, but not enough. The, it, the the artwork would have to sell me on a Frogger, and the price would have to sell me on a Frogger. And at the price that they have it listed, and with that artwork there, it it, it would be a no-go for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear that, I, I and I can respect that. Now, I'm sure there's people out there who are Frogger fans, and right. I'm sure they're probably going to sell some of these cabinets, but um, as you can see in the comments here, at least the people in this stream um, feel that 500 is too much, that they, you know, that they're probably, it doesn't sound like a lot of people who are on the chat right now are going to purchase it, but that's obviously a very, very small representation of the world. Right, and, and that's the same thing with uh, uh, Space Invaders. I felt the same way. It's like, uh, I, you know, I liked playing. I liked playing Space Invaders until something better came along. You know, so uh, and but the artwork is nice, but 
but in all reality, when you look online, you're always going to find Space Invaders at a, a much much reduced price than any other um, cabinet. Yeah. And even at the, I was looking at that, I think it was like maybe 150 bucks. And I was thinking, do I get that and just to mod it, you know? But, uh, but yeah, I think the Fargo is going to fall into that that category as well. It's going to be a reduced price. Yeah, I mean, so let's just say you see it for like 150 bucks in a Walmart store, maybe without the riser, maybe it's just the machine on clearance. You might pick it up at that time. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, I'm that's, that's, here. That's, probably what, that's probably what I would do. But. Yeah, Michigan, they, they, they keep things at full price. I mean, we, we seldom oh. ever get a, a break. Oh. All these things you see with $75, even like I said, $150, we won't even see that. That's only online. Um, I think I got my Galaga for like Black Friday for like one ninety nine or maybe two fifty. Mm -hmm. That's probably the lowest we get here. So unfortunately, we don't have those breaks. Yeah, so four ninety nine, but you get the light up marquee, you get the custom riser, and you get the stool. So I mean, and the stool. Yeah, I mean that's those things have value for sure. Um, but. Yeah, I'm wondering if we'll see a version at Walmart that let's just say it's 400 bucks because the stools retail for $80. So I could see how, you know, that's driving it up to 500. A version without, let's just say it's the machine with the riser, 400 bucks at Walmart without the stool. What do you guys think in the chat? Would you pay 400 for the machine and the riser without a stool? If we see that bundle at Walmart, let us know what we think. Yeah, yeah and, and this this and the uh, NBA also have a, a backlit control panel. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll we'll take a look at that. I think there's a good picture on the Best Buy website, which we'll hop on here in a minute of that control deck. See if we can figure that out. Okay, so let us know in the chat what you think about Frogger, and we are going to keep plugging along here. Uh, so obviously the Pac-Man cabinet is now available as well for pre-order, and this is the 40th anniversary cabinet. And uh, let's pull this up first. And what do you think about this one, Mr. Love? The wood just doesn't do it for me. Really? I yeah. like it. <laughs> it. It just doesn't. And, you know, and Pac-Man... I mean, I could I could jump on Pac Man now and probably get two hundred thousand on it. Pac Man was my boy until Miss Pac Man came along. So right. I enjoy playing Pac Man. Um, I don't know. The, the, that's just I, I I don't know. I didn't I didn't get the original Pac Man. Um, you know, I, I prefer the Galaga. You know, and again, I'm not I, I'm not gonna have a house full of cabinets either. So yeah. I'm not the I'm not the audience now. The person who just wants Pac-Man or, or, or going to get any cabin that comes out, obviously, you know, they're going to love it and they're going to want it. Um, but I, I'm very cho choicy with my selection. I have a vertical mm -hmm. with Galaga and all the vertical games. I have a Street Fighter with all the horizontal games. Uh, and I don't need to have a cabinet for every thing that comes out. So I'm not the audience to 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 be the, the – I'm not the person that's selling to all these new cabinets. Well, here's what I'm going to do with this particular cabinet. I am going to get this cabinet, but I haven't placed my pre-order yet, and we'll dive into that here in a minute. So what I like is, um, I mean, I have the Generation 1 Pac-Man. I've put a lit marquee on it. I got the kick plate graphics on it, which I won't be able to salvage the kick plate graphics, but I should be able to salvage the light-up marquee and take Angel Otero's marquee and replace it with this uh, the arcade. Although this one comes with an arcade one-up lit marquee oh, no, no. obviously angel the marquees angel makes are a little bit better quality obviously a lot better quality than than that uh so yeah so and also because i'm running out of space if i'm going to bring this machine into my home i'm going to have to sacrifice the machine so yeah i'll probably put the original stock wood board marquee back on my pac-man machine sell it on facebook marketplace take 100 bucks 150 bucks whatever I can get out of it and then turn around and uh, apply it towards this particular machine. I personally do want this machine, uh, this 40th anniversary one. Um, however, again, uh, the bundle at GameStop is 500 bucks. Uh, and of course it's because it's including a stool. And now, yeah, the stool with the riser and stuff. So the question is, is do we wait uh, or do I wait uh, to see if there's going to be a Walmart bundle without the stool. And because I'm pretty sure these machines are going to be coming with risers and marquees moving forward, and they're probably going to be 400 bucks instead of 300 bucks. 
in my honest opinion. Like, I don't see these machines being retailed for less than or for two ninety nine anymore. Do you? No, no. Uh, but uh, my, but my, if I'm recalling the history with GameStop, didn't they have a pre order with one of the Gen One cabinets or the Gen Two, and then RK One Up came up with another uh, cabinet. Mm -hmm. People end up getting before the pre sales were honored. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's that would be my only thing about doing a pre sale because, like, okay, yeah, if, if they I pre I put the pre order in and then RK come up, RK one up comes up with you just said without the stool, right? Even without the riser for two ninety nine, and then people have those. And while I'm still waiting for mine to be delivered in another month or so, I would be pretty pissed. And I think that's <laughs> my my memory. That was the people's experience with GameStop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last year I was quick to place orders. Uh, this year I'm going to be more selective and I'm going to do my best to be slower placing orders because as we all saw the, like, for instance, they had like eight versions of Marvel, get the blue one by itself, get the blue one with a blue riser, get the limited edition one with the riser. Uh, or, oh, by the way, now it's on the home shopping network and now it's got everything the limited edition one has but now it also has light up buttons. So, you know, I'm going to be a little bit slower placing orders this year. I don't know about you guys in the chat. Um, but yes, so for me personally, if I can get the Pac-Man machine, this one, for 400 bucks for the machine and the riser, and I sell, like if I had a Galaga cabinet, I mean, think about it, guys. You could combine cabinets, right? You could get rid of your Galaga cabinet, get rid of your Pac-Man cabinet, take the money from those, and apply it towards this machine. You're essentially upgrading to the new iPhone. I don't know what you guys think about that. Um, GameStop is always overpriced. True. <laughs> Very true, Sean. Um, okay, so let's get to... So if you guys are going to place a pre-order for this Pac-Man bundle from GameStop, let us know in the chat. Um, oh, by the way, we got a question here. Did you order Burger Time? I know I did. I didn't. I got Burger Time... And Frogger on my Galaga, and I play them all the time. Is it bad that I bought it to mod it? Because I think that's what I'm gonna. No, do. I think I think Burger Time has one of the coolest uh, shape you know, cabinet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it looks really nice, and and that's and that's my thing here is mm -hmm. if the graphics sell you, is worth it. And see, I have been wanting to have an arcade in my house forever, and I wasn't going to build anything from scratch because my skills are very limited. Uh, and I was going to pay the outrageous prices for the real one. So yeah, I remember when these things first came out, people was like, you're just paying two ninety nine for a cabinet. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. A, a cabinet and a monitor. Right. Uh, because the alternative to, to buying that two ninety two ninety nine empty cabinet and monitor uh, is, is quite a different show. So uh, if the cabinet appeals to you, whether you keep it as it is or mod it, uh, that's half the work right there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like even when the Costco, now the Costco bundle, when that came out, that was 350 bucks. And uh, we did the math and you were getting about $200 in upgrades for 350 bucks, but now it's 500 bucks. And you're, are you getting the $200 in upgrades for free? You know, at this point, you know, it's, it's kind of tough, you know? Um, 300 plus 54 riser, 54 lit, and the stool. Yeah, so so yeah, exactly, Steve. So it seems like the prices are fair, but the question is, is you're essentially probably paying about 100 extra bucks for that stool because don't forget those stools retail for $80. Right. So if you could get the machine with the riser for 400 bucks, would you do it? That's what I'm hoping on. I'm hoping I see that bundle. Um, I, I definitely don't want to go 500 and typically, you can't even find those stools anywhere, too. That's the other thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next one. And, yes, we'll talk a little bit about the light-up deck protector. I Yes, I have seen those comments in the uh, in the chat, guys. So we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, okay, so we have our, finally, our NBA Jam cabinet, which, ooh, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. So what do you think about this one, Detroit? Oh man, this now again, I'm I'm 53. So NBA Jams, I, I, I was married at 18. I had a kid at 21. And you know, I, I got started in, in responsibility uh kind of early. So 
I, my days in the arcades were very limited. I was in Chuck E. Cheese or Caesar Land or somewhere, you know. Um, so I didn't play a whole lot of NBA jams, but without a doubt, you couldn't go into an arcade and not know it was there. You know what I mean? From the boom shakalaka, you know, it, it drew your attention to it. He's on fire. I mean, it's one of the most exciting games, uh, you know, ever, ever made, you know, especially at that time frame. Um, it's a fun game. There's no rules, right? You get to knock people down and get the ball from them and you fly across from midfield. I mean, it's, it's one of the most exciting games. I mean, I, I didn't get the turtles in time, you know, because that, again, that, was, that wasn't that was really my a cup of tea. I, I, well, I, I watched them more on TV and as a kid with cartoons than I played the game. Um, so if I was to get a four-player thing, it would it would be the NBA Jam for sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I've predicted it in my other channels, other streams, uh, other episodes. Uh, this is probably going to be their biggest selling cabinet for the sure. next like 12 months once it goes live in July. Um, and for a lot of people, this will be their very first arcade one-up cabinet because it's got such a um, brand yeah. recognition and appeal to it. Yeah. Uh, I think it was very smart of them to make this cabinet. I think they're going to add so many brand new customers with this cabinet. And then those people, of course, are then going to become addicted and start buying a ton of arcade one-up cabinets. Yeah, um, I do want this cabinet, um, and I'm probably and I'm going to purchase this cabinet because you know, let's be honest, you have the ability to play against your friends, which is cool. Wouldn't it be cool like if we did a stream, me and you playing against each other, NBA Jam? Uh, that would be a lot of fun, right? Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to get it, uh, but for my my uh, sons and grandsons, I got the two boys and. They're grown and, and two oh, yeah. grandkids, and they live in Canada, as a matter of fact, right over in Windsor. Uh, so I'll probably buy it from the U.S. Uh, store and then take it over there. But yeah, they'll they'll enjoy that. They they play basketball on all of the consoles that they have, mm -hmm. uh, and their kids are right behind them with that passion. So yeah, they would they would have a ball with this for sure. Yeah. So now this bundle as well at GameStop is the five hundred dollar bundle. Um, and you can pre-order now and it comes with the stool you know it comes with the riser with the riser artwork and supposedly it comes with a light up control deck that this control deck right here lights up and if you don't want to order from gamestop this one is actually available for order on best buys website and this is a fantastic picture right here of that light up see how that's all lit up illuminated yeah, so it makes me wonder, did they put an LED strip right here? And is this like a clear, uh, what is that? Like a clear, like, um, T, like a clear T molding? T molding? Oh, so, no. yeah, let's see here. Big. Yeah. So now this is the biggest mystery. Everyone's been trying to figure this out. What is this? It looks kind of cool. Yeah. Lit up. I mean, uh, I I would like that more so than the than the uh, LED buttons. Yeah, yeah, LED buttons aren't a big thing. If I can play P Dubs, I will buy one. Yes, yes, I will definitely do like on my channel. You know, whether it's at games or arcade one up, let's play games together and see if people want to do that. Um, I mean, yeah. this, one, this one is by far the the to me the clearest justified five hundred dollar cabinet. Oh, okay. All I mean, right. That's, that's undisputable right there with this. And plus you have the Wi-Fi enabled to be able to play. That's that's a no-brainer. Yeah. So we got a couple comments here. A couple guys are saying that all three have the light-up control panels. Now, I don't know if that's accurate or not. And all yeah, I, saw on, I saw it on at least one of the other ones for sure. Uh, but this is the only one where I've seen like a clear picture. Like this is what it's going to look like. And it looks like the T-molding would be clear. And maybe there's some LED lights built in. So I guess the more little belt, I mean, think about it this way. So this bundle at 500 makes sense to me because you're getting the stool, the riser, you're getting a Wi-Fi capable machine. So there's some additional hardware in there as well as you're getting some additional bells and whistles with the, uh, with the light up uh, control deck. Now, again, I'm at a crossroads. Do I wait and see if there's a bundle without the stool? <laughs> Would you order it for 400 bucks without the stool, uh, Detroit? I would I would want to have the stool, uh, to be honest. All right. So uh, this is one you are definitely going to have you placed your pre-order yet, or are you going to? I haven't, but I will. 
Okay. So if you place your pre-order, are you going to pre-order through GameStop or Best Buy? I think I would do Best Buy, but that's just my personal opinion. What do you think? Yeah, I, I have better experience with the Best Buy, so that's probably be the one I call. And but I have but I the thing I have to consider too is even though the Canadian one is more, our money's worth more, so I'll have to play around with the exchange rate and see if it makes sense to um buy it over there as well so that, those are options i i can look because i'm just windsor just right across the border from detroit so nice 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 all right let's stop sharing that screen and let's head back here all right guys so um so we wanted to talk about a couple things for one congratulations detroit love has crossed 2000 subscriber milestone my channel also recently crossed that milestone we appreciate your guys uh support uh in doing that um, so I'm doing a giveaway on my channel. The contest ends in about an hour. Uh, but Detroit love, you're also going to be doing something for your followers. What are you going to be doing? Yeah. So, uh, it's two things. So the YouTube, I, I have a, a $50 Amazon gift card that I'm going to be giving to one of the subscribers on YouTube. Now my, my, uh, subscriber base is a little different than P dubs in that, uh, I've been doing this since. 2006 i believe no way with my channel uh it's got over a million views i mean it's been around the, wow. i never cared about the subscribership per se uh until uh, youtube changed the rules and said i'm not going to pay you for your videos anymore because you don't have a thousand subscribers and so that was the only reason why i started making a push towards getting more subscribers because they was taking my money right they was showing my videos and keeping my money right so uh and it's not a whole lot of money I make from the probably 50, 60, 80, 100 bucks max a month or something for the videos. But, you know, it's something that I get to put back into the craft. Right. Uh, and they just start taking that away for maybe a year, almost two years because they changed the rules. So. Um, so because of that, I do videos on I built a waterfall in my backyard and show people how to do that. You know, I, I changed the tire on my daughter's Chrysler 200, and it's really crazy the way it is. And other people need to know how, and I make a video, right? So all my subscribers aren't uh, necessary into the arcade thing, right? So, um, so what I think what I'm gonna do for the Amazon card is I'm going to put a post up and pick somebody from that comment. So that's somebody's active uh, with it, and, and so probably next Sunday I'll, I'll pick somebody from that uh, that comments and i've never done that before so p dog probably lean on you on how the best way to handle that <laughs> yeah giveaways are fun man people love it uh so yeah guys uh you can still get in on that contest go and subscribe to detroit love and hopefully you'll be kind enough to hit the subscribe uh, button on p dub's arcade loft and you know what uh the fact that you post the kind of content you want to post whether it's arcades cars all that kind of stuff it's what matters to you it's your channel you can post whatever you want, sir. So I applaud you for that. Uh, don't let other people tell you what kind of content you should or should not post on your channel. Um, and look at this. Mikey's been a subscriber for over a year. So thanks, Mikey. A. And I did also want to mention I do have a video controller card I'm going to be giving away to someone in uh, my three quarter scale uh, Facebook uh, group. So uh, P Dubs will put the links to that as well. So yep. I'll pick. Someone from that group to get this uh, because that's more int the interest is specifically with uh, Toy Shock and then the card for the subscriber from the YouTube channel. So those two two opportunities to win, and yeah. it'll probably be about uh, this time next week that I'll select the winner for both those things. Yeah, that's awesome because that uh, converter board is the first step for someone to mod their Toy Shock pinball machine and retain using the original monitor save you some money you don't have to spend 100 bucks or 50 bucks on a, new t on a new tv uh yeah. so that's fantastic um what else do you have upcoming as we kind of wrap things up here uh, uh you know you know and it's funny because i i do all of my videos on my phone you know i, I <laughs> really i didn't yeah, know that. yeah I've, I've always done exclusively you know whether it was an iphone today is a uh -huh. you know the last year or so i've been doing these pixel Google Pixel. So I do all my videos off the phone. I, I shoot them, I edit them, everything's done on the phone. So I, I tell them this sitting here in front of this computer is, is a rare thing for me because I, I just don't use my computers like that anymore. 
Yeah. Um, that's that's how I started. I started the first, if you watch my channel and you watch, uh, I've only been doing this now for about five months. If you watch the first month, two months of videos, it was all shot via an Android cell phone and Android editing, film editing software, and it's all garbage. And now that I actually have this nice PC and everything, we're putting together, I hope, better content. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, uh, you know, you know, I I've been there with the phone and dude, we gotta, we gotta get you on the PC more. I, li I like seeing the guy in the Spider-Man outfit. That should be your gimmick. Hey, I mean, this, this, this was like a $30 costume and this thing is like <laughs> Hollywood quality. This thing is, is pretty awesome. I would wear more if my wife would, would let me. Yeah, and uh, MM says here he's a new subscriber. He wants to know when you'll be making a Detroit Lions themed pinball machine. Uh, I don't know. I don't. It, I so uh, I'm I'm sure I'm going to get the RK one up uh, uh, pinball machine as well to check it out. So that that may be a theme I do for that because uh, I I have no I hadn't even thought about it. So thanks for the suggestion. All right, guys. So as we kind of wrap up the show here, uh, upcoming stuff I have on my channels. Um, we're hoping to do a loft report live show, uh, which is going to be mostly geared towards entertainment, uh, this Wednesday. Um, also looking to drop a couple arcade one up mod videos that I've been working on this week as well. So stay tuned to the channel, uh, for that stuff. Uh, please consider subscribing. Make sure you subscribe to Detroit love. I appreciate him so much, uh, coming on, uh, the show today and hanging out with us for an hour and showing off that awesome Spider-Man pinball mod, dude, that is Epic. It looks fantastic. A lot of fun. And, and uh, minus that, guys, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday. When it comes to these machines, uh, let's do the quick end cap. This is going to be the quick end cap before we sign off. Uh, well, I'll just say them out there, and and Detroit, you will say whether or not you're going to buy the cabinet. Yes, no, thumbs up. What are your opinions? So, Frogger at GameStop, go. Okay, me too. Frogger is a no, guys. Uh, even if it came down in price, it'd be hard for me to buy that machine. Okay, now Pac-Man 40th. I, 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 I'm going to have to say no, but it's an, it's an awesome. The wood grain just not my cup of tea. All right, I'm going to have to give it the Caesar's thumb. If I can get that bundle for 400 bucks without the stool, I'll get the Pac-Man cabinet. Uh, but I'm not paying 500 Okay, and NBA Jam for 500 bucks with all the bells and whistles. You're going to get it. Okay. So me, if I could get that for 400 bucks again, I'll do it. So, but if I don't see that bundle anytime soon, I know I'll probably end up buying the $500 bundle because I'll get impatient. So there we go, guys. Okay. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Loft Report our podcast, your number two source for arcade and gaming news. Make sure you follow the podcast on your favorite listening platforms. Make sure you subscribe to Detroit Love. Make sure you check out P-Dubs Arcade Loft on YouTube. And I hope you guys have a fantastic Sunday. Get ready to say bye once I find Until next time, I'll see you on the web. I <laughs> love it. Have a good day, guys.